It's the best for you to give us a better indication of how global warming is unfurling across the planet. But we need to take down the information for over a year. But it's for your benefit. It's here to help everybody. Yay. But at the same time, all this ice is gaining right now. And we're back in eclipsing the last 15-year average for Arctic ice, which makes no sense. Unless there's something else at play and it's not CO2. It's the sun. ADAPT 2030 Mini Ice Age Conversations covers changes in our climate due to a new and intensifying grand solar minimum. In the media, overlooking, downplaying, or burying cold weather changes occurring on our planet. This is in order to keep the global warming agenda steaming full speed ahead. I do this podcast and radio program because we need to begin conversations on how to adapt our food growing strategies long before 2030 as agricultural zones shift affecting global crop output but very few mainstream media outlets are talking about the most important issue of our time cold weather crop losses our sun is going through a 400 year cycle which has effects on our weather patterns as our magnetosphere weakens and the jet streams go out of flow it's not co2 it's not you It's the sun. Are you ready to thrive in the grand solar minimum? Then join me for many Ice Age conversations. I'm your host, David Dubine. I do welcome you this morning. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are on the planet. David Dubine, your host. Adapt 2030 channel on YouTube. Mini Ice Age Conversations podcast. Anywhere podcasts are hosted across the net. Here we are, Studio A Revolution Radio, 10 p.m. to midnight Thursdays. Thank you for joining the full court press to limit the amount of information you're able to see about the climate is now started. Danish Meteorological Institute removes the Greenland Ice Mass Budget page. Because it's showing gains on Greenland ice for three years in a row. Too inconvenient, so instead of letting you try to figure out how our society is going to move forward and progress, how you can protect yourself, they just decided to remove the information because it is too contrary to what you've been indoctrinated over the last 40 years about Greenland's always melting. The only ice loss happening currently would be calving because the gains are massive and they do continue. As we move forward with the geopolitical stage as well, China, center, we can take a look around what's happening in South Africa. I'm going to try to weave together a few of these geopolitical points along with the censorship beginning now in earnest of what you can view in the climate. Now we're all familiar with the coldest temperatures ever recorded in Chicago, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, many places, Philadelphia, New York, etc., And then there was a reprieve, and the temperature swung literally 100 degrees Fahrenheit in a different direction. 50 degrees Fahrenheit below zero, and then the next week it's 50 degrees above. We're looking at something like 40 degrees Fahrenheit below the normal temperatures, descending all the way to Texas. Along with all the record snows out in California, British Columbia at least two feet of snow. This is such an outlier here because coastal, the formation is with the water currents. It generally doesn't snow that much over on the BC shoreline. So what is it with all these weather warnings across the United States and Canada with record snows, record amounts of ice, if there is such a thing, I don't even know if they have record ice totals. Add a new category inside some of the the weather tallies. And understanding that these seismic and volcanic events are cyclical and you'll want to check out Upheaval, why catastrophic earthquakes will soon strike the United States. Leading experts in the geophysical effects of climate change make a strong case for a link between the sun's cycles of behavior with highly destructive earthquakes. The authors explain that when the sun goes into reduced energy phase, a grand solar minimum as we're entering right now, It produces colder weather and the worst earthquakes across the historical timelines. Included are easy-to-understand charts and graphs showing that we face an imminent threat. Find out the status of the threat for California, Alaska, South Carolina, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, 
and many other states and regions across our planet. And if you want to support this broadcast, click the link in the description box below to Upheaval Why Catastrophic Earthquakes Will Soon Strike the United States, available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Weather fronts smashing on each other. You have these real record heat over in the east. And then this polar front is moving so fast, it's compressing everything because the heat's not moving as fast as the cold front. So it's actually literally bulldozed out of the way. Different layers of the atmosphere are collapsing in on each other and compressing. Ice fog, but preceding that, it's just pure ice raining out of the air. We're getting about two and a half inches of freezing rain slash ice. That's a lot. Normally you get a tenth of an inch, something like this, of ice, but not two and a half inches of caking ice all over the, the power lines, the roads, emergency services. Can't even get through anywhere. They just can't go anywhere. Even with the special studded tires they've put on because the ice roads. It's a very unusual front. It's not normal. Yet the media is downplaying it. And again, they're following the same rule book that they followed. The warnings they're putting out are not giving two or three days of advanced warning. Mainstream global media, they're not even talking about it. They're not trying to warn you about it. It's a devastating ice event on the doorstep here. And they're still talking about how warm it is. The warnings will not go out until hours before you are unable to prepare yourself to get to the stores. And by that time, it's too late. You're just not going to have a chance to prepare. So I hope at least if anything out of this broadcast today, please prepare yourselves. This whole global warming and narrative, they're trying to downplay every one of these events. So what are the statistical possibilities of all-time record cold followed by all-time record heat, followed by even more all-time record cold that's going to break the records from the last storm within a two-week period. And the jet streams are not in the wrong place. The causation is leading to the outcome, and this is a weakening magnetosphere. And it's criminal that now the DMI is removing their Greenland mass ice budget due to the non-losses, I should say, of ice. So the global warming narrative is starting to fall apart. And wherever it's falling apart, they're just going to erase it off the net. And 2019 in earnest is when we start. They're already erasing data. So as we move forward into what, 2020, 21, when the extremes become so severe that the planet wakes up and starts to ask questions and say, wait a second here. Nothing's panning out as predicted. And these extreme freeze events are going to get more intense and more intense. The Arctic ice gain, again, I'm surprised that that's up for now because the amount of gaining ice over the last 15 years this year is pushing right at the full-on 15-year averages and going above that. So we were told that Arctic ice was going to continue to decline in overall breadth and thickness, yet the opposite is happening. Now, if we're told Arctic ice is supposed to continue melting, then how is it this year and last also that the ice is gaining? And if we take a look at the snapshots here of Polar Portal, that's P-O-L-L-A-R, the polar, like P-O-L-A-R, polar, and then portal, like a portal into the true state of our climate. They're the only ones running right now with the data that's available. The other venues across the planet are starting to be slowly shut and turned off at the tap. We also have the satellites all going down later on this year. There's going to be a gap between the satellites, what they're showing. There's four satellite sets that are going down at the same time. They say it's because the older satellites are, well, they're going to be retired. They're retiring them, even though they're still usable. They're just going to turn them off, basically. And then they're waiting to launch these new four different satellites that are giving us the same combined data set. So we're going to have four go offline. And they won't come back online until the middle of 2020. And it's just really strange, the timing on this. DMI shutting down their feeds on what's happening in Greenland. The ICE data sets are being removed, at least for the next year and a half. So what's going to be coming out is a combination of possible. I'm saying possible. U.S. Navy mixed in with foreign uh, again, consolidators of information like this. But DMI was pegged to be one of those working with the U.S. Navy to get a more clear picture of how much ice was really in the poles as these satellites start to go down and they bring up the new 
you know, third generation satellites to give us the data of full ice coverage. They have all these different sensors inside there and a more distinct, clear picture of truly how much ice. And they're looking into smaller bodies of water, different bays, coastal waterways, etc., coastlines that were not really previously down to that kind of pixelation where they were looking literally at hundreds of square feet versus square kilometers. So again, it's, it's the best for you to give us a better indication of how global warming is unfurling across the planet, but we need to take down the information for over a year, but it's for your benefit. It's here to help everybody. Yay. But at the same time, all this ice is gaining right now, and we're back in eclipsing the last 15-year average for Arctic ice, which makes no sense unless there's something else at play and it's not CO2. It's the sun. So where do we get into the new Twilight Zone episode? Northern Hemisphere snow totals still well above even last year's record totals that were added in as the combined averages. They're looking at about another 50 billion tons extra of snow on the planet at the moment versus last year, or I should say the combined totals that included last year. That was a record. 700 billion new tons last year of snow over the 30-year averages. But this year is even eclipsing that. Yet somehow it's just not in the greater, let's say, sphere of information that's being put out through the mainstream publications. They keep talking about, oh, the Himalaya is going to have less snow. The, the Himalaya is going to melt. All-time record snows in Pakistan to the point where snow leopards and pheasants and different types of fauna, they're moving Something's happening with the plants up there, too, where the... Let's take example like a pine tree. Even if it's extremely cold, the needles still stay on there. But they just found in Pakistan some of the, what were considered, I say, a cold-hardy plants. Now, we saw the same thing in Canada last year where the Christmas trees were killed off. We're seeing some of these same things in Pakistan now. The kill-off of something that was considered not killable from cold in the plant realms up at the edge of getting into the tree line and, and lower. These snows are all the way down into Lahore, and the news is just so ecstatic that the rains are here, at least in Pakistan, because the drought has been there forever. And when every single news feed and channel looks at the events happening in Pakistan as gifts from God on how much rain is coming back so they won't have a, a food shortage this year as they've had in the past because they can grow more food, Headlines of a gift from God for rainfall, those are heavy statements. This is northwest Pakistan. Now, why do I bring that up? Because, A, the animals were fleeing, and they were bringing some branches with them down the mountain, which makes no sense to me anyway. The pheasants were flying away with branches and different <laughs> parts of plants that they were carrying down mountain. Go figure that. I I'd still try to figure it out. There's an enormous amount of coverage coming out of Pakistan because... And the snow so low and they're having floods now in cities. It's like a full-on event happening in Pakistan. Full-on coverage. Really easy to find information this time. It's not like one little publication saying, hey, there was some snow. Even in Indian media picking it up. Because in Jammu and Kashmir, that's the overlap area. J and K. So Indian media is all over it too on the record snows. Northwest Pakistan. This is the same area last year that had the floods, where the rivers flowed, that hadn't flowed in 3,000 years. Now, what's the chance that it's flooding in the same places and the rivers are flowing again in those same exact areas that were abandoned 3,000 plus years ago because they went into what we know as our modern climate, where whatever, the intertropical convergence zone or equatorial cloud band shifted and created a drought in that area. Previously, huge settlements in there, we can go back through history and find the trading routes and how they were interconnected and, and schools of thought and art and idea coming out of those same exact areas that are now abandoned. Now, last year, the global media was saying, oh, it's a one-off, these floods, you know, these satellite images of rivers running next to things that were abandoned that used to be full settlements, forts, trading stations, Buddhist monasteries, cities, towns, etc., Media downplayed it last year like, oh, it's just a one-off event. It just happens sometimes. Cool. Go back to sleep. Nothing will happen again. You'll never see it again because it was only a one-time thing. But now it's happening again. 
So again, when I, I always go for the three-year trend line when we're coming into this grand solar minimum for intensification. If we're seeing the deserts again in Pakistan get the third year of rainfall, it's the second year in earnest where the, the rains are enough now where they're talking about it's going to alleviate the drought where they can boost their agricultural output and those same rivers next to the ruins. No wonder they call it a gift from God. This is not a one-off. This is a permanent. The weather's shifting this way. The climate is going to make a new position movement. This is why you're seeing the extremes across the planet in terms of atmospheric anomalies. TrueLeafMarket.com. I really want to talk about growing your own food, which will be a necessity moving forward there's so many ways that we can go about growing different types of vegetables that we're going to need. You know, microgreens are incredibly nutritious. They're super fast to grow. In less than a week, you can have something that you can eat. Also, sprouts. We can get those a little bit taller, a little more dense, a little bit larger volume on the vegetation mass coming off of there. So how do you know what kind of sprouts to grow? How about wheatgrass or herbs? What about different types of herbs that we can add to our foods? Now, what I just described to you, there's a full range of starter guides there at trueleafmarket.com for you to take a look at. Even if it's just for your own knowledge and you don't purchase something from them, at least get the information so you know how to grow microgreens, you know how to grow sprouts, you understand what some of the herbs are for. Trueleafmarket.com. Use the link below and give yourself the gift of organic and heirloom seeds. Unusual dust storms coming in the wrong direction off of Africa. See, the dust storms had shifted, and they were moving from south to north. But at the same time, the wind patterns were exactly east-west with extreme cold and extreme heat across Europe as a vertical line. But then the dust storms were almost a horizontal line, and they were colliding right over there. I guess the, the charge from the dust mixing with the charge from the storm fronts in Europe traveling east to west just combined over and created a static discharge across that part of the globe. You're starting to see the atmospheric anomalies everywhere. Yet, the discussion still does not begin as to why it's happening and will it intensify. I would be happy if the global media, mainstream corporate media would just start the conversation and say, hey, these changes are strange. Let's look into it. Maybe it'll get stronger. Maybe they won't, but let's look at it. Something unusual is happening. But they keep feeding us with these garbage articles, in my opinion. Now they're trying to say that 1984 headlines in the truth equals lies and lies equals truth. Global warming is causing all the record cold. Record cold that's breaking records back to the 1860s. That makes no sense to me how they say a little bit of tiny warming of half a degree somewhere is now breaking cold records 40 degrees cooler than other measured times, if you will, over the last century and a half. That, that's insanity, that kind of talk. They're also back to the whole Himalayan glaciers are going to melt in three or four years and there'll be no more water. Yet it's so interesting that Pakistan gets all these incredible heavy snow Flood events along with parts of Jammu and Kashmir. Reports coming out of Afghanistan are really spotty at best. You know, there's so much turmoil going on over there. Still is. So the weather reporting coming out of those areas, I mean, I guess you're going to have to rely on a military somewhere to give you that, but I really haven't found feeds into military weather that's that, I said, succinct down into small areas. Like the Swat Valley areas like this to see what the true snow totals are because if they're going to be doing operations in there they're going to have it down to the valley how much extra snow was in or which passes are cut off i wish i could get into those feeds because i just don't even know where to look and everything i've gone for so far in the military release of information on the weather that they have is always ice the ice operations seem to be the easiest to find if anybody out there knows where you can find military assessments of snow and rainfall totals through the Middle East and also parts of Pakistan and Afghanistan, I would really enjoy getting that information because it could add an integral piece to the overall understanding of what's going on. Because if you can pinpoint these areas for the third year in a row that are increasing in XYZ factor from the atmosphere, 
It'll give you a good indication of if you start to see 30 or 40 points in the same couple hundred mile square location, then you know that is a hot spot where massive changes are happening. Now, just for an example, from Turkey up to Croatia, that area on our planet is a hot spot. There is so much happening there in terms of record this, record that. You know, the Bura winds ripped through at 175 kilometers per hour through Croatia. They were battening down the hatches over there with such extreme winds and the record snowfalls across Turkey, etc. And in Slovenia as well. And we keep seeing these same spots getting pounded again and again and again. The Italian Alps. So that's location specific and it keeps coming back to the same news feed that you see. It's, it's always in Turkey. It's in Croatia. It's in Slovenia. It just repeats. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. So you can get a real good gauge that that area of the planet is having some anomaly happening. And if you were going to look for further changes, you would look there first. Because that's where it's showing like right now before the massive change is coming. I'm going to call these periphery changes in the build up and lead into intense changes. But what about Pakistan and Afghanistan? That's an enormous amount of the cradle of civilization as we know it in earnest is in that part of the world. How many flips and changes have they seen in the last 7,000 years? So being a cradle of civilization, where conditions were there, were so ripe for settlements and expansion and agriculture and art and literature and language, construction, engineering, and it does go on. The list that came from the Indus Valley area. It's not so hospitable now. But it used to be. So if we can get a better gauge on what's happening around that whole area from, you know, the west part of India and through that all the way into Afghanistan and maybe further over into Kazakhstan or further up. China's experiencing massive changes, too, out in the Terran Basin, and they're getting rains again. Got to try to compile that as it comes through. You know, searching through social media in China is much more difficult than it used to be. You're not allowed to talk about any stories that aren't first approved from the government. You can retweet something only from a government-approved news outlet only. If you do any of your own news reporting, you know, you take a photo from your backyard or, you know, snap a little video of something, weather front coming through, whatever. That's illegal now. You can't do it. So whatever comes out of the social media feeds is just a regurgitation of the approved media in China. So you know how strict they're going to be with censorship on these types of things. So even getting into this weather information anymore, it is a whole new ball game compared to two or three years ago. You've got to realize what I just said about China two years ago, independent weather reports were coming all over their social media, all over the place. But since they showed a lot of floods and homes collapsing and parts of cities just washing away, and then the government report was, oh, no, there was a couple homes damaged. We did such good with the drainage control. See how good we are. We put in massive drainage and, and outflows. We control everything. But what was seen on the ground was actually the very opposite of what was being reported in the Chinese media. So there was too much of that coming out, specifically with weather events. So what did they do? The same thing DMI is doing. Instead of discussing it, letting people look at it and make their own conclusions, they cut it off from the source. So that is the second place on the planet now where you're no, no longer able to get weather information, really. What's next, do you think? I personally feel, in my own opinion, the ice is going to be next. The Arctic ice. If they cut off Greenland, they're going to want to cut off the Arctic ice. And then what are they going to do? Cut off the University of Athens dust concentration maps after that because they don't want to show you that the jet streams are are out of flow going east, west, north, south, right over the Mediterranean somewhere because that's causing all kind of electrical discharge on our planet there. That would explain all the record snows, etc. If there's more particulate in the atmosphere combining and colliding with fronts coming out of the Arctic, hey, that's your snowmaker right there. Will they want you to continue to know that that's the reason that the jet streams are bent and broken in the wrong places, funneling and colliding? What would you do as a government? The information's coming out so fast and so furiously now about all these changes, it's very difficult for the powers that be to hide it any longer. They did a very good job with global warming over the last 40 years to explain away all the changes that you were expecting to see 
which have metamorphosized in front of you, they manifested right here, right now. But there's too many, they're too large, it's too all-encompassing, and now the global warming narrative is starting to fall apart because these changes are larger than were expected by magnitudes of order, 10, 20 times larger than was even expected in, let's say, 2100, 2100. 80 years from now, through the IPCC models, it's happening now. So there's a different causation for it, and the information flow in earnest is going to be cut off. How quickly will it be cut? Not sure. But any indication is where we're moving by the end of 2019, you're going to see data sets going down left, right, and center that are proving that the grand solar minimum is intensifying and CO2 is not to blame. Great Lakes, for example, how innocuous, how innocent is Great Lakes ice coverage? Super innocent, right? They've had this type of coverage and analysis for 100 plus years. But now Great Lakes, Lake Erie, for example, had the fastest ice gain ever recorded, ever, in all the records ever kept in this last super freeze. It went from 3% ice coverage to 90% ice coverage in a single week. And when you look at the chart, it's vertical. It is so far beyond anything they've ever experienced on how fast that lake froze over. I'm going to say ice coverage didn't freeze solid, froze over. At what point... Do we get these massive gains that have never been seen before in terms of ice coverage on, on water bodies before they start to cut those feeds too? Because it's proving that something is completely wrong at the moment. Well, unless you understand what's coming in the future in terms of how our sun's affecting everything on our planet. At what point do they turn off the magnetic anomaly maps? I mean, there was so much pushback with the world magnetic monitoring because the runways and, and other things needed to be readjusted so quickly. And they hadn't updated their models for almost six years. But when they came out, oh, the findings are shocking how far our poles, magnetic poles have moved. Again, I think they were doing that not to spook people. But at what point do they cut that off? Because the magnetic pole movement's going to scare people. And they don't want you to see that information. This video is brought to you by our friends at TrueLeafMarket.com. Heirloom and organic seeds for any grow zone on our planet. 